And it is on to the else views. This is the portion of the show where we talk about the TV shows that we have been watching over the past week. I say TV shows because Corey doesn't have anything and I've, I'm going to talk about two TV shows. You didn't come up with anything last minute, did you? No, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to go something really quick. I have fallen down as we were talking, uh, YouTube holes. And, uh, one of the things that I've been introduced to lately I'm I'm finding some new bands. I'm finding some 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 hip tunes, and uh, there's this band that I discovered just recently uh, named Charlie Bliss. And, and Charlie Bliss seems like a '90s band. They're very evocative. A lot of people compare them to Weezer, and there's certainly guitar sounds and stuff in there that reminds me of Weezer. But because of their singer, uh, I believe her name is Eve or Eva, very much reminds me of Letters to Cleo, which. I know me and Ben from Parks and Rec are the only people who know who the fuck Letters to Cleo is anymore, but I really dig their sound. Uh, they've got album out called Guppy, and they had an EP out before that. The EP is cute because there were three songs, and if you check out their videos, it tells a whole story of this kind of nerdy guy who's trying to win the affections of this girl who, who's played by the singer away from her dirty scuzz boyfriend. And it, it goes through the storyline in the three songs slash videos. But the rest of their stuff, they've got a few releases for the new album. And it's all just really fun. It's kind of like alternative pop sound with, with heavier grunge sensibilities into it. It, it is very, very 90s music. Uh, if you liked that kind of stuff from before and you're like, man, I, I've heard Pinkerton. I, is that even the name of a fucking album? So many times. Uh <laughs> Then can I can I get something else? Can I can I can I get more than just Aurora Gray Alice? Yeah, you can. There, there's there's new bands that are still doing that aesthetic and making making great stuff. Another thing they did, which I absolutely love, and and I will suggest that you go search for it, is they did a live performance of the entire soundtrack for Josie and the Pussycats, which. The music for Josie and the Pussycats, every time Josie was singing, they used the voice of Kay Hanley, who is the singer from Letters to Cleo. So they know their aesthetic. They know what they sound like. And so you get the whole band is up on stage and all dressed up as the Pussycats performing. And they do the whole album. And all these kids are sitting there listening like, hey, this is a good song. What is this? And and then someone's got to say, oh, it's from the Josie and the Pussycats soundtrack, <laughs> which had rosario dawson and tara reed of all fucking people and is great you know again i i had that soundtrack because i really like k hanley and letters of cleo but it was just good kind of like poppy music it, it was kind of similar to spice world and in a lot of ways i think it actually predated spice world very fun band great great sound great aesthetic very talented i've i've been enjoying the hell out of them so that's that's it go check them out yeah, Spice World came out in 97. Uh, Josie and the Pussycats came out in 2001. Oh, I was way off. Yeah, just by like five years. And, but it was <laughs> a bad five years in general. <laughs> yeah, but the... So, Corey, Corey I'm going to ask you this. Do you watch the TV show Blackish? I do. I, do? Okay. I, I, I've gone more into it as it's gone along. Mm-hmm. I, I think the... I didn't expect to like it as much as I do. And I think the kids in that show are extremely talented. Oh yeah, uh, and and I like Anthony Anderson a lot. I am kind of in love with the woman who plays his wife, Bo, who is Diana Ross's daughter. She is terrific. Lawrence Fishburne as the the grandfather and everything, so good. The more that I like tune into it, and I don't want to get overwhelmed with a bunch of sitcom stuff and everything and, and ABC shows, but like I I keep jumping into that one. I keep going back and like yeah, man, Blackish is really good, really good. Oh yeah. And it's it's one of these things that like they did for the premiere for this for this season they did a Hamilton esque episode where it was it was it was a musical and nice. they've yeah they've done all these different things that I'm like all right this is really cool this is really good at what they're doing here and Larry Wilmore is a uh, cons- I believe a consulting producer for Blackish and the first show I'm going to be talking about. The oldest Zoe has her own spinoff. This is called Grownish. It's created by Ke- uh, Kenya Barris, who created Blackish, and this follows Zoe, the like I said, the oldest daughter in college. Um, it, it's it's the different world 
to Blackish's. Yes. I don't want to say the Cosby Show, but it is a Cosby Show, uh, which yes. in its time was a great, great show. Just in hindsight, we have some problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. Anyways, besides, but like g- getting past that. So the cool thing with this is it features a lot of people that we've seen before. And in, in well, okay, I say a lot. There's really it's really three from the Blackish world. So you have Dion Cole who plays Charlie doing a double duty. He is on both shows now, like full on series regular, both shows <laughs> or, well, I don't think he's series regular on blackish, but you know, he's used to where he's almost ser- like they might as well just bill him series regular, but you have the actress who plays Zoe stepping down a little bit from blackish because you know, they wrote her off into college now. And then um, you have the love interest from when she was doing the college tour in here as well. This show is really good. It's a good growing up as well because this is done by one of the production companies, the same production company that that's doing Marvel's Runaways and actually all the ABC properties that don't air on ABC Network. And I'm blanking on it. It's like ABC Signature Studios, I believe is what it's called. And part of what this means with it being on Freeform is you hear Zoe swear. You hear these people actually swear. And that, that took me aback for a second because I'm like, all right, this is a spinoff. I'm expecting you know a similar thing. They've done enough to change the styles. So you're still it's still being told through like you have the narrator like you have with Andre Johnson on Blackish, but it's Zoe. And instead of just the voiceover thing, it's actually she pulls a Ferris Bueller or a Zach Morris and actually speaks to the camera and stuff like that. For, for good effect. It's not just like time out and talk to us. It's in the, like they've aired three episodes. The second episode, she's crushing bad on uh, the love interest, Aaron. And you, uh, you hear him, you, you see him talking to her and he invites the group, but she thinks it's just her to pizza after this uh, thing, this art gallery thing. And you see her go, like as she's like this doing getting the reaction shot and you just see her go look to camera look you heard that right it's all stuff that adds a little bit of humor but it's not it doesn't take away from the story and it's really good also really funny with how they're doing all this stuff doing you know there there will be some comparisons to like what was the cosby show spinoff uh, a brave new world, world or a different world there will be some of those which i don't you know i mean you take apart apart the bill cosby doing the things that he did outside of the show aspect of it i think that's a good comparison yeah well Um, it it shows it shows the the young character growing up it it touches on a different audience it touches on different themes than what you get in a family style sitcom to uh especially life right now being a young person of color in america it's a really challenging time and while they could go into that in blackish and they obviously do the the trump election episode uh was a very very good example yeah this approaches it from the youth perspective because i think as adults we're inherently cynical mm-hmm. and that cynicism is funny and and has its place absolutely but i think the young still can approach things with more hope and can look at the impact that they can make change in the world at this point in my life i want to be someone who helps affect things to be better going forward for you know the the youth of tomorrow and everything but i think the youth of tomorrow has much more power in that than i do and have much more time to they have the long game and i have the short game even if we're both playing for the same team and we're on the same side looking for the same results i can't do as much as they're going to be able to do and unfortunately i've been kind of conditioned to think like many people have that what kind of impact can i really make but when we see change happen it seems to happen because of the young it's it's yeah. the young getting out and voting when when that isn't always the case it's when they do holy shit you know it seemed like the vote just flipped in a way that people didn't expect it's yeah because they cared because we enticed them into caring about this and they did this when they don't when they stay home that's when things kind of continue down the the bad course so it allows for different stories it allows for different viewpoints and a different tone it sounds like and i think that's very exciting Uh, i hope what happens what happened with a different world doesn't happen with this show which is 
in a different world, Lisa Bonet left really fast. Mm -hmm. I, I think she was only in the first season and then she disappeared and it became a show about all these other people had nothing really to do with the Cosby show at all because she just she was young and she decided to do some other stuff and she didn't really want to be associated with the show anymore. I don't know all the ins yeah. and outs of why. We also lost Marissa Tomei, uh, who like I discovered on that show and obviously went to great things after yeah. that. But it's like, man, that was a big change. And suddenly Whitley was the the character that we were supposed to root for when she was the she was the the foil to Denise in the first season. So yeah. it was it was a weird shift. So, but it's kind of like going from Scrubs to the final season of Scrubs where it's all about the student doctors. Yeah. I mean, so I mean here's here here's sort of the uh, the other part I'll, I'll like to expand on the difference between grownish and blackish. Because you you are right where they're able to focus in on it like like the Trump election special where Actually, with any of them, with any of the issues, it's hard because you're you're hitting through, you're going through the eyes, you know, of the dad, and then you get the B and C plots through, um, you know, and even the D plots through the other, you know, the other members of the family. So it's you know there are weeks where, right, and even I think even you know early on half a season where you didn't hear any really anything from Zoe. And I'm like, what the heck? I mean, you have this, where, where is she at? You know, you're just missing this one character. So to do this, it's there. The, like you said, the stories are going to more focus in on this specific section. And I mean, I could even see them possibly going a similar route with junior in a couple of years when his character graduates and then he comes into grownish at, um, possibly as well. It's interesting because you're going from a, you're going from two ensemble or one ensemble to another where one ensemble it's this diverse in age to grownish where it's diverse in backgrounds the first episode <laughs> so charlie he's an adjunct professor take like teaching this class and i'm like what the fuck like it's, it's one of those things like like because i'm right here at this border like like it's it's like the britney spears song i'm not a, not a girl not yet a woman sort of thing like I'm a little too old to be in with that crowd, but I'm too young to be in the grownish or the blackish crowd where I'm the parents and all that. It's like, I'm like right here in the middle and I'm like, wait, is that an actual course where it's like, like, like a marketing thing and drones and then it, it's, it's a midnight class and they got to go through talking about like saying why they, why they picked this class. This is all the pilot. And then they all give their different stories, like all six of them give their stories as to what was happening. And it's where you get the different backgrounds of the one of her best friend, like quickly becomes a best friend in here. She's a Jewish lesbian who missed sign. Basically, all of them missed signing up for other classes, but she she got distracted by a pretty woman. And then they started making out and then they all end with like the the magistrate or the admissions room door shutting down. Another one are it's uh, p twins who are track stars, like they're on a scholarship and all that stuff, and they have this front that they got to put up and creates funny jokes later on. They miss it because of uh, a weird reason, and then there's an Indian guy student in here, and he missed for all these other reasons. I'm trying to keep it b vague because partially I forgot some of it, but other also it's like I don't want to spoil what I remembered. I mean, you're seeing all this and it's like, okay, we're getting a more diverse story here. It's not just, all right, they're all black. They all have these issues, you know, like that Netflix well, show. It's not centered on a family. No, yeah, true. It's not centered on a family. Uh, like I was mentioning, it's not like the Dear White People show on Netflix where it's like still a comedy, but it's like, here's why we're right and you're wrong aspect. It's here are our problems that we have. Let's go through it while, while our teacher is playing with a drone. Because Dion Cole is hilarious in that regard. The other show, which I actually watched a week before it aired, thanks to the winter premiere on Hulu, because Freeform, formerly ABC Family, has a big partnership with Hulu. Like I don't, they don't advertise their website at all when it comes to watching on-demand videos. It's like they advertise their app, and then it's Hulu. And the other one is called Alone Together. Now, for fans of At Midnight. You might remember the comedian Little Esther on there. Yeah, I remember Esther. Esther P. P, uh, P I'll just go with P because that's her the initial it's for her last name because it's that that right there. What you just said. Um, 
She was also on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend this past season, but she's created, I think she's created, but she's starring in this show called Alone Together. And it's, I actually, I'm going to look up, see if it is created by her because it seems very autobiographical. Yeah, like, almost like auto- one of the co-creators. Uh, so yeah. is so Benji uh, Flello, who is the other star of the show. Yeah. And it seems like it's, they're hitting on a lot of the stuff that they go through. It's also executive produced by The Lonely Island, by Andy Samberg, Akiva Schaefer, and uh, Jorma Tacone. And basically you have, there are two young people in Hollywood who don't fit the the norm of, you know, being beautiful and all this stuff. And they're, they're, they're really young. And so they're just like best friends and it sort of backfires because people think they're dating or they're married, but they're just that level of friends where you could, you know, you could pick on each other. Like you, like almost like brother and sister in that way, really hilarious. Oh God. Who is, I, I, there was someone in the pilot that I'm like, Oh, that's cool. They got him to be in the pilot as Benji's older brother. And I'm sitting here going, okay, this is great. I love seeing this ginger Gonzaga's in here as Benji's sister. But I mean, it's again, really funny i'm love i'm loving the show just because of the fact that you know it just seems like we're hitting oh uh, chris D'Elia is his brother his older brother like they're staying at his house and all this stuff and they have this party i'm sitting here i'm watching this and i'm like man this would be me except i'm it'd be because i'm like bigger than everyone else than and not in the muscular way but it's it's one of those shows that i relate to way too easily I highly recommend them both. They both air on here in the States. They air on Freeform on Wednesday at 9 p.m., I believe. 9 and 9.30. It's grownish then uh, alone together. And I, I honestly say check them both out. These are strong mid-season premieres. Granted, it's Freeform, so it would be the half-season, eight episode in the spring, then eight episodes in the fall, then eight in the spring, eight in fall sort of deal that they do with all their shows. But I, I honestly really like this. I like, I like both these shows. I think they're great, you know, getting away from the whole hour long freeform thing that they had, that they've had going on from since it was ABC family. For more on this Galactic Network podcast, go to GNCast.com. That's G-N-C-A-S-T-S dot com.